basic R can be operated on any of the Windows platform. So you have separate applications for Windows and the server platform. The recommended processor would be 64 bit, but you can operate it on the 32 bit version also. The RAM size is one of the key things which you are looking at basic R, which would roughly stand at around 2 GB. That's good to use because R would be doing in memory processing. Right? It's good if you have more RAM. Now we'll talk about installation of the R Studio. Now what is R Studio? R Studio is basically an IDE that is an integrated development environment which lets you collaborate on your project. So at one point in time, not one single person would be working on a project. So many people would be simultaneously collaborating and this is the platform which lets you do that. Simultaneously, it makes it easy for us to extract data, look at graphics and all those things. And that is why we would be using R Studio. So your base R would be something which will be actually processing everything. R Studio is going to be a layer about that, which is going to talk to R. So you're not going to interact directly with R. You're going to install R. Your R Studio will interact with R and you as a user will be talking to R Studio. Right? So the installation for that would be very simple. You'll just go or first thing which you need to install is your basic R. So for that, you would be going on your CRAN uh, server. Basically, CRAN is your comprehensive R archive network, which you can just Google around. So just type CRAN and that's where you will reach your CRAN website, wherein you will have separate installation files for the Windows platform as well as the Mac version. And for the Linux platform, it would be a separate EXE. So you'll run that first. So it's a very small executable file, which you will need to download first and then run it. Once you do that, it will start running in your system, but we won't run that. Then you would be installing R Studio. For that, you'll just put R Studio, Google it on, on your uh, on your Mozilla or your Google enabled frame. And once you do that, you will be going on an R Studio web page wherein you can just uh, download the executable and run it. And that is where your R Studio will be installed. Now, uh, as I was talking, there are different versions. So you have a desktop version of R Studio, which you should typically be installing if you are a learner. If you are somewhere in an environment like an enterprise, you will be using the R Studio, which is for the enterprise. Again, there are different versions in that. One is a payable version, which has support along with that. And one is the free to use version, wherein obviously nobody would be supporting you if you raise a query. For example, if something crashes, whom would you look up? Right. So that comes with the support part for that you will have to pay. Right. So that's a separate version. Now we'll try to understand the basic construct of RStudio as to what the different panes stand for. Basically RStudio would look like when you first open it, so you will only see three windows, right? So currently what you're seeing on the screen, you're seeing four windows, right? So the top left quadrant is basically the script window or the data window, right? Here you would be seeing most of your codes. And if you try to open any data frame or any table in R, R Studio that should also open on the same window. So this helps you to write the code, document them and reuse them whenever you want to. Now what you're seeing on the screen is the basic menu. So if you go on file, a new file, that's the R script menu. If you do that, that's where your top left quadrant will come up, wherein you'll be typing your codes and seeing your data also most of the time. Here you can run your R commands and see what actually happens. Now there are different ways of doing them. So you can just keep your cursor on the actual line which you want to execute and press a control enter and it will get executed in the console window. You can just select a patch of code so that you can do a batch processing and press a control enter. And if you are not good with the keyboard, you can use the run button which is shown on the screen which does the same job. Okay, now we are talking about the environment window. So this is on the top right corner, right? So you can see that marked over there, it's the environment. So it basically lists out all the objects, data, functions, user defined functions, whatever you have created and called for in this window. So you can see whichever objects is loaded. Basically in a nutshell, you can also say that this is your RAM, which you're accessing, right? On the next tab, just next to the environment is the history. So whatever codes you're executing will be stored over here by default. Right? You can change these settings by going in the global options wherein you can change the setting so as the history is not recorded. Right? So same like what you can do in your, uh, in your uh, Google enabled web browsers wherein you can deactivate your history, but it's recommended that you keep it activated. So in case if you are not saving anything, you can go back and revert. 
now we are talking about the console window so what you are seeing on the screen is uh, just a blasting of the console window so here all your commands are actually getting executed so whatever commands you execute from your script window is actually executed in the console so this is where you are actually accessing your R the base R now what we are seeing over here is the bottom right quadrant so you have the first tab as the file then the plot then the packages then the help and the viewer so we'll be talking about the first option that is the file option so it basically lists uh, whatever files are there in your base folder so you have a set working directory so once you set that this starts pointing to that folder location and will list out all the files kept over there if you were writing something back on your hard disk this is the exact location where it will get registered the next tab is the package tab uh, after the plot so before that after the file there is a plot basically it's the uh, default graph device wherein you will be seeing all the graphs and just next to that you will be having the package tabs wherein you will be seeing the base default packages listed right so if you are using this for the first time you would be seeing a short list of packages as you become an avid R user and you will install more packages this will get complicated and there will be more packages listed over here the next tab which we are talking about is the plots tab so which i had briefly described which actually shows you the graphs whatever you're going to run in your console it will show the output of the graph over here so you're just seeing an example of a scatter plot over here and now we are going to the setting options so if you see on this uh, you can access this to tools options and that is where you get this option so you can do your general settings over here for instance you can set uh, what would you like as your default CRAN uh, replica mirror so you have different locations so like for example in India it would be IIT Madras wherein you have the uh, R server the CRAN server and similarly you have one in Canada and US and different locations you can set this to global option zero that means it will be in the cloud so you don't have to think about what the location is setting your working directory this is the next thing we'll be doing so to do that you have to just use in your R either in the script window or maybe in your console so whenever you execute a code in your console you will be using directly the control button to execute a code that's the only difference but it's advisable to write all your codes in your script window so that it's documented so set WD that means set working directory is actually like setting up where do you want all your basic folders and uh, files to be written right uh, you would also observe one strange aspect that the uh, slash over here right the slash is either has to be forward or a backward now depending upon the version which you're using for so the current version it's okay but for the old versions maybe you will have to follow an opposite way of writing the slash so normally you write a forward slash you might have to use the backward slash also depending upon the version you're using now installing and using packages right I spoke about some default packages which are present in base R right apart from that you will be using most of the packages which run up to the scale of more than 5000 listed on CRAN which you might use as and when you would require right for and for this you can either go by the menu driven uh, option or you can directly write the code in your console so if you type install.packages and list the package name so for example if I have to use a package called as AMAP no, uh, we are not talking about what AMAP is but supposingly if you want to use AMAP or as it is listed over here SQLDF that means SQL data frames if you have to use the functionality which is present in this package you will just type install.packages and sqldf or amap or any package which you want to install and just press enter if you are in the console window and if you are in the script window you will just press control enter